I'm really looking forward to uh, listening to some more fantastic conversations. I was already listening to some wonderful sessions and conversations this morning and people who are really excited about creating great staff learning. Um, and for me, I think it's really important because sometimes we do need some inspiration. Um, sometimes within our teaching, it gets down to the nitty gritty, it gets down to the jobs I have to do today, that big task list, and we just need to lift up, we need to zoom out, we need to suddenly think about our longer term learning. I think one of the toughest experiences um, that I get as part of my job is when I go into schools, um, I have a real mix of experiences of talking to lots of staff about their learning. Uh, we go through, we do uh, audits of CPD, and as part of that, we ask lots of different people. And one of the saddest moments is speaking to a teacher who perhaps typically um, has been in, um, in a career for a few years, and you ask them and say, what about your learning? You know, what, what, what professional nourishment are you getting? And I've had people break down in tears, because at that moment, they look back and say, I haven't grown. I haven't been nourished. I haven't had the excitement. I remember it, but I don't have it now. And it's a really sad moment where they burst into tears through the frustration of it. But then on the other side, you also speak to colleagues who are just saying, I've never felt so stretched, I've never been made to think so hard, but also feel that I can innovate and create and my ideas count for so much. So we do need some inspiration sometimes to zoom us out and remember all about our own learning. Sometimes we need to see and hear from people who are doing amazing magical things and make us believe more is possible. So when we go back to our schools, we take a little bit of that magic with us. Ultimately, everybody is here because we want great learning for every young person, every pupil in our schools. We want a rich learning experience, and that means great teacher development. It means we have to let our teachers grow and develop and contribute their ideas and thinking so that that can happen. Now, it's not just a lovely soundbite. It's actually something which is backed up by lots of evidence. And from this study from the US, uh, we saw that actually where teachers report low quality support environments where they report they don't get much CPD, they're not trusted, they don't get much support with behaviour, then those teachers appear to improve a little bit during the first couple of years of their careers, but then beyond that, all their efforts don't seem to result in improvements for young people. And that's immensely sad. You know how hard they're working. And they're working in schools where they're not feeling trusted. A lot of what they're doing is about performing harder and worrying more. However, when you talk to the teachers who say, I get more support, I get more professional development, I get greater trust in me, then not only do they improve faster in their early career, they keep on improving. Every single year, each teacher is better than they were the previous year. They've brought more ideas. They can help more children learn. That's so important for us. That says that by designing our schools, our cultures, the way we lead our schools, we can help every teacher be better every single year. And surely that's something we aspire for for everybody. We also know from uh, Vivian Robinson's amazing uh, study of uh, leadership back in 2009 that there are five key things that great school leaders do in order to improve uh, outcomes for learners. And that includes sort of order and safety and spending money in the right ways and having a great vision. And also something around the quality assurance of teaching. But the most important activity for any leader, the most impactful activity that you do is enabling other teachers to learn, modelling your own learning, creating an environment where teachers can grow and flourish. So we know it's not just a thing that feels good, it's something that does good. Now, I was um, extremely proud when last year the Teacher Development Trust, along with TES, uh, launched our report, Developing Great Teaching. And this is something that, um, as a charity now that's uh, a few years old, we've always felt really strongly that we don't only want to be doing things that feel like they're a good idea, we want to be doing the things that we know will help the young people in our schools. And we're incredibly proud to ask an amazing group of researchers, led by Philip Accordingly, um, and met, uh, some of our wonderful colleagues from Cure, joined with colleagues from Durham University and the Institute of Education, to review the evidence from across the world what sort of CPD activities, what's the content, how do they take place such that teachers can learn and 
the young people in our schools can benefit as well. Now, I would suggest that if you're interested in helping colleagues get better, you should read this report. I just want to finish with a little contrast between two possible scenarios for professional development. It's about a school which is organising something around growth mindset. A wonderful idea, Carol Dweck, and it really speaks to uh, what we aspire for for our students. So in version one, senior leaders who've heard about growth mindset, they've seen it at other schools, they get very excited about the idea and they make it a real focus of their professional development. One of the assistant heads is tasked with making a PowerPoint presentation about it and they read up and they make a presentation, they schedule um, a twilight session. Everyone has to come because this is really important. Within that, the PowerPoint is presented, there's time for discussion, there may be post-it notes, um, and then a summary is emailed around. Beyond that, they say, well, we want to see something's happening now. So as we come around, we want to see growth mindset things happening. So we're going to make sure learning walks and so on, we have growth mindset within the pro forma that we use. Okay, so that's, that's version one. Version two is a contrast. Version two begins with some teachers working together with exercise books, with test scores, with homeworks, with essays, with pieces of art from their classrooms. And they explore what's, what are we seeing from groups of children that we're more worried about compared to the groups of children we're less worried about. What is it that we can see in our classrooms appear to be barriers to learning? What is it in our classrooms that we really aspire for our children that we're not quite meeting yet? Well, how can we push ourselves further? They identify some specific pupils. They can see some specific examples they want to do something about. They then go to a growth mindset session, but this time it's with uh, someone who's worked across a group of schools. They've really worked through the research. They may be a teacher, but they've also helped in a variety of settings. Not just, I've read it and I'm telling you, but I've experienced it, I've worked through it, I've found the difficulties, I've found the nuance. Those teachers know what problems they're trying to solve. They can ask great questions, they can identify the really key bits of learning for them. The person presenting not only says, here's what you do, they also present tools and say, here's how you can check if you're making a difference yet. Here's what you can do in your classroom to measure whether this growth mindset work is helping you solve the problems that you found in your classrooms, whether this growth mindset work is helping you achieve your aspirations for those pupils. But most importantly, you're the ones who need to be evaluating and testing and assessing constantly. Senior leaders will hear about it, but you're the ones who need to be in control here. The teachers work over time. They plan lessons together. They observe each other. They continue to take evidence from their classrooms of whether they're making a difference yet. They use those tools for assessment and constantly check, are we solving those problems we want to solve? Are we reaching those aspirations that we want to reach? And the teachers are in charge of checking. The teachers are empowered. They're grabbing the knowledge. They are working through inquiry approaches in their classrooms, collaborating together. Now, you may get some sense that I have a slight preference for one of these two examples. I don't know, I may have given that away. But today is about looking at how do we move towards the models that are more based in evidence, the models that are more around professionalism, the models that inspire our teachers and really help our pupils. And it won't surprise you to know, version two is much more aligned with that evidence. Today we're gonna to hear lots of ideas and exploration of how in lots of different ways, whether it's through coaching or lesson study or looking at initial teacher education or through middle leadership, how we can explore those ideas and really embed them. So I'm really excited about uh, what we can achieve today and what we can learn today. I hope you feel inspired, I hope you feel challenged. Most importantly, I hope you begin to think about how you take the learning from today and begin to embed that for the next months and years of your career. Thank you very much.